Hi and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I thought it would be fun to revisit this little art journal that I made about a year ago and make a page that fits that size. The inspiration for today comes from this stamp set that I had for over a year. It's the C Elements stamp set by All and Create. I've been holding on to this stamp set for about a year now and it has been waiting patiently for its turn. So let's start. It's a simple and easy project for today that you can easily follow the steps. I will be working on a hard watercolor paper and I'm starting out by doing some white embossing. This is the Background Voices stamp set and uh, you can see it is a well-loved stamp. I have been using it a lot throughout the year. I am a big fan of uh, text stamps because they give a great visual texture on a background plus they fit pretty much every project. Now of course since I'm working white on white you can't really see anything. In any case I'm just applying my fine uh, white embossing powder. I will heat set everything and then I will repeat in different areas of my paper. And now let's add some color. All I did was to spray with three different colors. These are dilution sprays and the colors are crushed grey, London blue and vibrant turquoise. Remember I'm working on heavy watercolor paper so although it is going to warp it will lay completely flat once it dries. The next step is to do some stenciling. I chose this stencil because it has all those circles all around and I'm going to make sure that uh, it is centered towards the top and I'm roughly aligning the lighthouse just to have an idea of where it's going to fall. Then I'm using a baby wipe and I will go over the design a few times. This is going to moisture the paper, it's going to lift some color and give that ghost effect. Another way to go would be to just spray water on top of the stencil. I'm also going to add some splashes, this is just water. Again it's going to lift some color and with a paper towel I'm just going to blot the excess. The more it dries, the more the effect is going to show. And again I'm going to grab the same stamp set that I use for the embossing, but this time I'm going to do some stamping with black archival ink. And here is a reminder, if you do enjoy the videos, don't forget to click the like button, it really makes a difference. And also leave me a comment, I do make sure to read them all and answer any questions. I'm using that black ink pad to darken up the edges a little bit and by the way my disc bound journal is 6x6 with black cardstock as pages so this is 5x5 this way when I stick it on top of the page it's going to leave a black border. And now let's work on the focal point I'm going to do some stamping I will use the big a lighthouse from the stamp set and I will stamp that with a black archival link so that it turns out permanent. I'm also using a stamping platform. This is the one by Studio Light. It is widely available here in Europe and I'm using my stamping platform so that I can stamp it a couple of times to get a good impression. This is quite of a big stamp with lots of detail. There are a few banners in the same stamp set and I chose to stamp just one of them. So now I'm going to do some fuzzy cutting. It isn't really difficult. The design is quite easy to go around it. And at this stage you can use your favorite coloring medium to add color. I just love working with my pit brush markers. So that's what I'm going for today. Now I am covering up both my images, the lighthouse and the banner because I want to work with those brushes and add some shading. For that shading to work I need to make sure that this is a non-porous surface. That's why I am covering up everything with matte medium. To stick everything down I did use white glue and that's because I wanted to make sure that I will make as less mess as possible with the glue. Remember the background is made out of dilutions and it does react with anything that you add on top. So always keep that in mind. And now it's time to add some color. For the coloring I'm using my pit brush pens by Faber-Castell. I usually go with the big brush markers but I have been getting comments that you cannot find them in the market. These are the exact same product but in a smaller barrel. 
In any case, that's my favorite way of coloring the images on my art journal because I can easily add color and shadows and blend out any harsh shadows with my finger. But you can definitely work with your favorite medium. You can work with watercolor, you can go uh, with your alcohol markers, it's just up to you. But I definitely find it easier to blend out colors with my figure rather than grabbing my alcohol markers and try to find which colors should match together. Anyway, that's just my way. So I'm adding a deeper color of purple on my flowers here. I also grabbed a yellow and an orange for the light on the lighthouse as well as the center of my flowers. For the lighthouse I'm going to use a grey color so that I can add some shadows on uh, one side to make it look more realistic, give it some shape and uh, roundness. And then uh, for the darker areas of the lighthouse, for those stripes, I'm going with magenta. I think it matched beautifully with the rest of my color combination. The beauty of those brush markers is that although you can smudge them in the beginning, they do dry permanent, plus they don't cover up the lines, so you can still see the beautiful artwork on that lighthouse. And it's time to add some highlights with my gel pen. If you are a beginner in art journaling, keep in mind that this is a great size to start with, since you don't have such a big real estate to cover up. And if you are a card maker, you can easily use that as your card front. White splashes is something that I cannot stay away from, so here I'm using some white spray paint to add my white splashes. You will see that they are not going to end up as bright white as they come in the beginning, since they are going to react with the inks from the background. I also did some stamping with one of the text stamps on my cutout elements. Not too much, just here and there, so that I can add the same detail that I have on the background on top of my elements. This is a little detail that brings everything together. Now I'm spelling the word shine and for that I did use those uh, tiny alphabet dies by C6 to cut out the letters. If you do have uh, letter stickers it's even easier or you can just write it down. To complete my sentiment I'm going to use one of the stickers from the sticker booklet by Tim Holtz. If you feel like they are not going to stick down nicely, you can always use a dot of glue at the back. I'm also going to use my white gel pen to outline them. And today is definitely one of those days that I am working outside of my comfort zone. If you follow my videos, you probably already know that I usually avoid using purple. Don't ask me why, it happens to be the last color that I will ever grab. So I did use some circle dies just so that I could go around them with my gel pen to emphasize that stencil at the back and now I'm sticking that on my journal. And that was the page for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Links to everything I used can be found down below in the description. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.